Um, hi everyone, my name is Rachel. I'm a Marine Education Fellow here at the UGA Aquarium. And today we're gonna talk about a really um, fun topic called camouflage. So that's why it's called Now You See Me, Now You Don't. Because animals that can use camouflage um, will actually be able to hide in plain sight. So they can either change color, they can um, use different things um, to help them blend into their surroundings. So we have an octopus here on our first slide. So that's an animal that uses camouflage as well. So they can change their color, even the, um, the bumpiness of their body or the smoothness of their body to blend in with rocks or sand or other things. So we're gonna meet a lot of different animals today that um, live in our aquarium and um, use camouflage. And we're also gonna learn about some other animals that we don't have in our aquarium right now, but also use camouflage. So first we're gonna play a game and it's called hide and seek with ocean animals. So I'm gonna show you some pictures of ocean animals that are camouflaging. So they're disguising themselves, they're blending in with their surroundings and your job is going to be to point to the animal on your screen. So you're gonna to have to try to find it in the picture and point to it on your screen. And then once I show you the animal, um, I'll put a little circle around it and then you'll have a chance to guess what kind of animal that is. Um, you can enter your answer in the chat box. Okay, so here's our first picture. So go ahead and point to this animal on your screen. Try to find it in the background. Um, and I'll give you a few seconds to look through the picture, look at the sand. We're starting with the easier one, so hopefully you'll be able to find it. Okay. So this is the animal right here. So if you have an idea of what this animal is called, you can go ahead and have an adult help you um, type it in the chat box or type it in yourself. Um, so this animal has eight legs. Um, they're called tentacles normally. Um, and they can blend in with their surroundings using little uh, cells that are filled with color that they can change um, across their body. So this one's blending in really well with the sand. So Kayla, do you have any answers for me? It looks like people think it's an octopus. Awesome, yeah, this is a pretty, um, an animal that most people know what it is. So it was on our first slide, so I kind of gave it away before we started, but this is an octopus. So sometimes we'll have an octopus in our aquarium. Right now we don't have one, but when we do, we have a lot of rocks in their tank so that they can camouflage and they can crawl around in the rocks. Awesome job. So here's our next picture. Go ahead and look really hard, try to find the animal and go ahead and point to it on your screen once you've found it. I'll give you a few seconds to find your, the animal. Okay, so this is the animal right here. If you have an idea of what this is called, you can go ahead and type it in the chat box. This is one of the animals that we actually have a lot of in our aquarium right now. So I'm gonna get to show you a live one of these. Um, they camouflage really well with rocks like are seen in this picture. And they can actually move, even though they don't look like they can swim, they, they move slowly across rocks and shells and things that they can um, cling on to, um, depending on where the food is or where the best hiding place is. So do, you have, do we have any answers for this one? Does anyone know? We don't, this is a pretty tricky one. So Rachel, you tell us what kind of animal it is. Yeah, so this is a tricky one. You may not have seen this before. This is called an anemone. So we have a few sea anemones we're gonna see um, a little while later, and I'll share a little bit more about um, this animal when we get to see them live. Okay, here's our next picture. So it's getting a little harder to find the animal. So look really hard in the different corals and see if you can find the animal, point to it on your screen. Okay, so it's right here in the center. Um, so if you have an idea of what this animal is called, go ahead and type it, your answer in your, the chat box or have an adult help you type it in. So we have these sometimes in our aquarium and they're not great swimmers. They only have a small little fin here and a few spins by their head. So they'll actually cling on to corals that they're, blend, they're camouflaged into and wait for food to pass by um, that they'll eat up with their long, their long snout here. So do we have any answers for this one, Kayla? We do, seahorse. Awesome, good job. So this is a seahorse. Um, this is a type of blind seahorse and it's blending in with the soft corals in the background here. Okay, here's the next one. So it's getting a little bit harder to find the animal. So look really carefully and see if you can point to it on your screen. Um, the animal that's camouflaging with its environment. So blending in, hiding in plain sight. 
Okay, so here's the animal right here. It's still kind of hard to see it even when I point it out because it blends in really well with the sand. If you have an idea of what this animal is, you can go ahead and type it in the chat box. Um, so this animal, we're gonna again see a live one in a little while. But Kayla, do we have any answers for this one? We do. A number of people have said fish and then others have also said flounder. Awesome, great job. So you're both correct. This is a type of fish and the specific name for it is a flounder. Um, so we're gonna get to meet a flounder um, in one of our tanks as well as another type of flat fish. So that's um, the kind of fish that's really flat and they'll sit on the bottom here and blend in with the sand. Okay, so we have one more. Again, this one's kind of tricky. See if you can find the animal in the picture and point to it on your screen. Okay, so if you found it, it's right here in the center. So it's really small. Um, you can go ahead and type in the chat box if you have an idea of what this animal is called. But this is one of my favorite um, ocean animals. It's really tiny, it probably only gets about one inch um, or a little bit longer. And they hide in these um, corals and they actually live in the Indo-Pacific, so the Pacific Ocean, so not on the Georgia coast, but they do live in these corals. And you can see they have little bumps called tubercles that look very similar to the corals that it lives in. And so they, um, they'll change their color depending on if they're in this pink coral or more of a purpley coral. Do we have any guesses for this one, Kayla? We have a guess for a sea dragon. Oh, wow, that's a good guess. Um, it's actually a, sea, a type of seahorse. Um, so similar to the one we saw a few slides ago, but this one's actually called a pygmy seahorse. So it's very, very small, like I said, and it's really good at camouflage. So it looks just like the corals that it hides in. So awesome job with our um, animal hide and seek game. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen real quick. And we're actually gonna get to see some live animals. So in order to do that, I'm gonna switch devices real quick so we can be mobile. And Kayla's gonna field any questions that you guys have. You can go ahead and type those in the chat box of what you've seen so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch off my video and switch devices, but Kayla can answer any questions. Fantastic, thanks Rachel. And as we're doing this transition, um, if you are seeing a number of different boxes instead of just Rachel or myself on the large screen, you may wanna put it in speaker view. And the way that you do that is in the upper right hand corner of your device, there's usually um, a box with three dots that's the speaker view. Um, and in the meantime, if anyone has questions, um, or if you have any cool stories about animals that you've seen that have camouflaged, you can type those in the chat box. Um, it looks like Rachel is pretty speedy, so we'll turn it back over to her in just a second. Um, but again, if anyone's seen a flounder um, or seahorses or things that blend in really, really well, we'd love to hear those stories as well. Does anyone have any guesses about what animals we might see behind the scenes? The camouflage. Sorry about that, I'm back. <laughs> Wonderful, welcome back. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Miss Rachel as she takes us behind the scenes. Thanks, Kayla. Um, a few technical difficulties there, but we're gonna go behind the scenes of the aquarium and actually meet one of our animals that we saw in our picture. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of a trek here. Um, and we're gonna meet a flounder. So I'm gonna switch my screen around and show you the tank that it lives in. So this is one of our tanks in the back of the aquarium. Um, and if you look really carefully, I want you to try to see where the flounder is in this tank. So I'm gonna kind of look around um, we'll look in this tank too and see if we can find a flounder. They're really good at camouflage. So if you want to try to point to it on your screen um, and see if you can find it. So it's right there. So this is the flounder right here. Hopefully you can see through the glare of the water. But as you can see from that um, example, these, uh, these flounder blend in really well. So even um, like our picture. And I actually pulled out a flounder so you can see it up close. So this is what it looks like without um, being camouflaged in the sand. 
So as you can see, it's a very flat fish. It's going to live on the bottom mostly. This one got a little stressed out, but <laughs> their eyes are top side. So they're both on the top of their head. So you can, you might be able to see on this one. I'm not going to get too close because he is getting a little stressed out. But um, we'll get to see another flatfish that also has eyes on the top side of its body, um, so that whenever it hides in, um, whenever it hides on the bottom, they can actually see over the sand, um, even though they're hidden in the sand. So that's why their eyes are going to be on the top side of their body instead of one on each side. So now I'm going to head back out here, and we're going to meet a few other animals. So the next one is another type of flatfish. So this one's called a hog choker. So give me one second and I'll flip the camera around. Okay, so this one is also called a flatfish. It's called a hog choker. You can see it's a little bit darker than the flounder that we saw a little bit ago. So this might live in darker muddy areas instead of um, the, the lighter colored sand that we saw in our tanks. And if you look really closely in the front of its head here, you can see two little uh, circles that look like eyes. You can also see its gills right there. So it's breathing and a little mouth. So um, its eyes again are gonna be on the top of its body. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about the life, the life history of a flatfish in a storybook a little later on. So our next animal is called an anemone. So this is one that we saw in our little hide and seek game. Um, and you can see um, all little tentacles. So this is actually related to a jellyfish. So jellyfish also have tentacles, um, but they don't use camouflage quite like the anemones do. Um, and their tentacles are gonna be used for stinging, so to protect themselves, but also to move food into, the, into their mouth. So if anyone has an idea of where their mouth is, you can go ahead and type your answer in the chat box. And as you can see, kind of the side of its body here is like a purplish brownish color. So it's gonna blend in really well with the shells and the rocks that it attaches to. These are also called the flowers of the sea. So they kind of look like flowers. And some animals like clownfish or other types of fish um, might use these anemones as a home, so as protection. So they can work, they can function as a home as well um, as a camouflage animal. So do we have any responses for where you think the mouth might be? We did have someone respond on the anterior side um, and then someone else said top center. Yeah, so you're right. So you can kind of see on this one, the center there is gonna be where their mouth is. And that's also where they release their waste. So it has, two functions. Um, and so their tentacles all around their mouth are gonna help grab little shrimp and plankton and small food. And then they'll move it kind of like that tentacle moved right there. They'll move it towards their mouth. Um, so that's how they'll eat their food. Awesome. So we're gonna see one more animal that uses camouflage and he actually uses it in a different way. So I'm gonna pick him up real quick. So this is called a spider crab. Um, so as you can see, this doesn't look, um, this isn't like a fish or an, an anemone. This is actually a type of crab. Um, so he has claws and he's kind of a sandy color. So um, spider crabs can blend in because of their color, but also they do something special. So you can see kind of um, the, ye the yellow parts right here. This is a type of soft coral um, that I actually put in his tank a few days ago and he put it on his back. And the orangish part is a sponge, um, if you can see that. That's a, a red beard sponge. So we get that kind of soft sponge on the docks here. And so they have little um, kind of like a Velcro-like back. So they'll stick things like corals and sponges and other little pieces of sand and rocks on their back so that they can um, camouflage with their environment. So if I was a fish swimming overhead, um, over top of this crab, I might not be able to see him because he blends in so well with the corals and the rocks around him. So this is a little bit of a different type of camouflage. And we actually can call, call these crabs decorator crabs because they decorate their back. 
Awesome. So I'm going to put him back in his chain. Oops. So yeah, so those are a few animals that use different types of camouflage. Um, and so that's, those are a few that actually live in the tanks in our aquarium um, and that we get to care for here. So the next thing we're gonna do um, is play another little game, but I'm gonna switch back over to my computer. So if, Kayla, if you had any questions that came in, Kayla can go ahead and answer those for a little bit. I'm gonna stop my video. So we did have a question asking about the spider crab and whether or not um, it can pinch and whether or not it can feel when it's being held. Um, so they do have uh, the ability to sense their environment so you can tell that they're being held, um, but it doesn't hurt them at all. In fact, these crabs will actually take like a piggyback ride on cannonball jellies. And so they're used to kind of getting picked up and moved around in the ocean by other organisms. Um, and they do have claws, but they're really small claws and especially that size one. Um, and they're mostly scavengers. So they're gonna be feeling around on the bottom of the seafloor and for very small pieces of food. So they don't need very big or strong claws uh, the way that a blue crab would. Were there any other questions? Not at this time, but again, if you have questions, feel free to type those in the box and we'll get to them. Okay, so we're gonna play a quick game. Um, we're gonna just do one or two rounds of this, but this is called dance and hide. So because of um, these, these animals camouflage, they can actually hide in plain sight. So if they freeze really still, they're not gonna be able to see, be seen well by other animals that might eat them um, or animals that they're trying to eat. So they'll be able to hide very well. So our game is called Dance and Hide. So you're gonna be able to dance like an ocean animal that does camouflage. So I came up with a few dance moves, but you can come up with your own as well. So first one, um, because a flounder is a fish, we can show fish gills, that could be our dance move. Um, we could also do a full body flounder. So I'm gonna attempt this. So they kind of swim on their stomach. So you can swim like this with your fins on either side of your body. Um, and then you can also do an octopus. So you can use your arms and legs as tentacles. Um, you can do an anemone. So you can use your tentacles up top like your fingers here. And so those are just a few um, different dance moves. Oh, you can also do a spider crab. So show your crab claws. Um, and I'm gonna play some music and you're gonna get to dance when the music is playing. So you'll dance like an ocean animal. And then when the music stops, you'll have to freeze. So that means that you freeze, you use your camouflage and you hide in plain sight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the music. So pick which animal you wanna be and you can switch animals throughout the game too. Okay, so we can dance. Freeze. Okay, dance. Freeze. Okay, make sure you, you can switch animals too. Okay, we're gonna do one more round, get ready. Freeze. Awesome job. That was great. So we can, you can play this game more at home if you want. You can pick any music you want. You can make up any um, dance moves that have to do with uh, camouflage animals. You can also play with siblings or other or adults that you um, have at home and you can um, get competitive with this. So if someone doesn't freeze well enough and you, they move a little bit, you can pretend you see them and they can sit on the ocean floor until the next round. So the instructions for this game is included in the activity sheet that we have linked on the event page. Another thing that you can do at home is a couple crafts that have to do with camouflage animals. So the first one that I'm gonna show you is the seahorse puppet, finger puppet. Um, so this is a seahorse here, and you can see on the back side, there's kind of a little loop. So you can put your finger in this loop and use this as a puppet so it can swim around on the ocean floor and you can make little um, corals that it can blend into as well. So that's our first um, craft that's on the activity sheet. 
And then another craft that you can do has to do with our flounder. So this, um, you can see the flounder right here. He's blending into the sand that I painted in the background. So there's, this is an ocean scene that you can blend into and he's on a stream. So if you move the flounder, you can kind of swim along the bottom. You could also paint rocks and things that might not be as, he might not be able to camouflage as well in um, and see how camouflage changes as the uh, flounder moves along the bottom. I also painted a soft coral here so that my um, seahorse finger puppet can actually blend in as well. So that's another option you can do um, if you want to incorporate both of these crafts. And again, the directions for these crafts are on our activity sheet um, that's linked on the event page. And these all are using materials that you probably have at home, like paper and cardboard and string. Um, so I hope you are able to do those crafts after this program and have a lot of fun playing with your camouflage flounder and your seahorse finger puppet, which are both animals that use camouflage in real life as well. And I also wanted to take this time to give a big thank you to our friends of the aquarium whose support makes it possible uh, to do this online programming throughout the summer. Um, and if you're interested, this is how you can become a friend. Um, and Rachel, if you want to show us our next slide as well. Um, these are some other ways to stay connected with us, some of our social media platforms. Um, and if you had fun, we hope that you join us next week um, at Thursday again for the afternoon at the aquarium. Um, and on Tuesdays, we'll have another program as well. This one all about animal enrichment and some of the toys we use with our turtles and other, other organisms in the aquarium. Um, and all of that can be found on our website as well, our upcoming events. Um, and it does look like we have a couple of questions coming in and we have just about a minute left on the program. So Rachel, at lightning speed, how long does it take a flounder to grow? Um, so they take about a a few weeks, so two to three weeks until their eye will move um, to the other side. Um, but in terms of completely growing, I'm not sure what their exact life, um, uh, how long their life is normally, but we can get back to you on that part of the question. Yes, that's a great question. We'll get back to you. Um, and thank you all so much for coming and spending the afternoon with us. And um, we hope to see you next week. See you later, alligators. <laughs>